Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show off the 10 coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in the LEGO throughout the week. Check out the description below. I've got all the links to everybody's flickers and more people I didn't have time to show up in this episode. Uh, it's all linked in the description below. Let's jump into the very first build of the week. Jaffa is an excellent LEGO buildable figure creator. He builds larger custom creations of interesting creatures and or people and or creatures people. This is called Huntsman. He is a plague mech and the name is Pi. And there's actually a lot of different of these plague mechs that seem to have come from different builders throughout this last week or two weeks. Perhaps it's part of a building contest. I am not totally sure. It looks like some guys have coordinated to create some absolutely excellent, amazing creatures and or, well, mechs. Mechs that have something to do with the plague or post-plague. Uh, maybe this is, uh, these are some of the guys that have replaced living creatures after a terrible uh, post-apocalyptic scenario. This is the impression I get, but anyways, this mech is absolutely awesome. I can't even recognize some of the pieces that were used here, but at the end of the day, not only is it a dynamic shape, but it's posed incredibly well and just looks absolutely epic. Before I realized that this plague mech theme was something that people were building up throughout the week, the number two build is also another one of these plague mechs. It's Centipede from Anthony Wilson. Once again, the dark undertones of the world that this thing must come from cannot be understated, though there is a few more uh, color highlights. The bright magenta Technic plates certainly jump out at you, as well as the neon green or the trans green. The name Centipede, I don't think really needs to be explained in this particular case. Though the body does feel like it comes up in a somewhat caterpillar-esque style with just a ton of different spider-like legs at the bottom. The arms and fingers have a similar nasty clawed style as the last mech and they're just awesome. I highly recommend you check out all the different plague mechs. Though these two were my favorite. They are the first of the 10 that I really like this week. And then we have, uh, let's change gears completely. This is Saint Tropez from Philo Schoen. It's a wonderful micro scale harbor and city build. I haven't Googled St. Tropez. It could be a Mediterranean city or something. I like the pastel colors of the buildings that are right along the waterfront. And it's a wonderful scene with the hill coming up in the back in what looks like an old fort or some ancient building that seems to be looking over the harbor. All right, and now I've looked it up. This is a coastal town south of Nice in the south of France. So I feel pretty good about my guesstimation overall. It's an absolutely excellent micro build. Let's move on to number seven coming down the line. This is called Lego Ideas Zen Bonsai. I like that he put ideas in the title of this particular build. I've linked the Flickr, but the link to his ideas project, if you want to vote on that, is also in the description. It's from Brent Waller, and it's not the first time I've seen a Lego Bonsai tree built, but I really uh, appreciate that he also included a small fishing scene and little bridge as well. It's still presented uh, with the stand and display around the edge that this could be an actual just bonsai tree uh, that's being maintained uh, in a more traditional sense, but it also flutters between the world of this just being a wonderful uh, ancient tree built at a regular fig scale because you do have the old fishermen by the river. So not only is that just a nice little concept to play with, but the build for the tree itself is awesome. I've been having fun building a few different jungle trees for Yavin, which are very simple <laughs> in comparison to something like this. And in general, I feel like nature builds, especially trees, um, are just an endless source of creativity and new types of connection pieces for builders all around. At the end of the day, I think there's some probably pretty complex different connection points in order to get these weird smooth angles and just these odd shapes that make up this twisted trunk. And Brent Waller did an absolutely excellent job putting this thing together. Number six, is from Ben Cossey. It's called The Latest Find. This isn't the only really good Star Wars scene that I have uh, seen people put together for this week, but this one certainly is my favorite. The lighting is awesome. This looks like the inside of a sand crawler where droids would malfunction and often uh, wander into the desert after years of being abandoned. So it's, a, it's an interesting concept, a wonderful build. Just love the scene all around. And then Nick Trotta has created a very large, very angular, 
angular spaceship called Refraction R99. And I really mean angular when I say angular. The, the wings are thick. They don't look like they're built to be atmospheric necessarily, though they do have the, a somewhat aerodynamic shape. But just looking close at this ship, there is so many weird little cuts, almost like a cut diamond or piece of glass, hence the name Refraction. At least that's sort of where I'm coming from uh, by guessing the name as to why it's called that. But it really does look like one of those odd ships that maybe, you know, it's a stealth ship. It's got these weird angles where things don't bounce off of it in a particular fashion that can be detected by sensors. Or who exactly knows what the ultimate concept is behind a spacecraft like this. I just love that it's bulky. It looks really beefy. It's got some weapons on there. It looks like it can get into an engagement and is probably a bit more heavily armored than that of a standard fighter. This is definitely a build that you can get lost in all the fun little connection points that go along the wings and the back and the front. Even the armor that really uh, outlines the cockpit looks great. And now we're moving on to number four. This is from Michael Herbolt. And I think the name of the castle is Ard Dara, but I can't be totally sure how to pronounce it. Number one, I really appreciate appreciate everything that is included in this total scene. It's not just a castle. There's also a bit of a lake or pond that rests below the edge of the wall. Also, the castle itself is tucked in against the very steep edge of a rocky mountain. The combination between the white adobe walls, I'm just, I'm just guessing, mixed with the very, very bumpy and uneven stonework of the towers uh, juxtaposes really well. The red roofs match up nicely with this color combination. And then also there seems to be an incredible scene taking place uh, just beyond the entrance. I don't exactly know what the scene and or situation is. My guess is it's a disagreement has happened between gentlemen and they are solving things with the, the business end of their bayonets. I know that's that's not technically correct. It doesn't matter. It's an awesome scene, great building techniques, huge display, and I highly recommend you check out more of this guy's builds if you want to see more uh, amazing medieval style creations like this. Let's move on to number three. I guess we're in the top three. There is no order to this, by the way. I just talk about things in the order in which uh, I enjoy and think would be good to present. Anyway, Another build has come from Intert. This is Victor Vine's bike. Uh, I'm a big fan of floating speeder builds. It's basically all I used to do back in the day. And not only is this an awesome speeder build, but this takes the cake because he also used uh, brick separator pieces and not just any brick separators, not the orange or the new teal, but he's got those rare green ones and they fit together in an absolutely excellent fashion. Often I appreciate when somebody uses a brick separator. It's usually a piece that kind of sort of fits into a build, but always feels a little bit out of place, like maybe an upside down one for a slide in a park or something like that. But these fit really, really well. And personally, I'd put this on my top five favorite speeders so far of 2019. It really is just an excellent sleek look all around. I just love the handle grips. And we're moving down to number two. This is from S&T Studio, and the name is Yellow Crane Tower. This time I pre-Googled the location of this tower. It is a real place. It is in Wan, Wuhan uh, City in China, built back in 1981. It's a relatively recent massive tower pagoda 170 feet high and it rests on the banks of the Yangtze River amazing building and I think done incredible justice when translated to Lego bricks I don't know any information about how many bricks this is or how tall it is in real life here what you can see is that it is lit from the inside so I bet this looks absolutely amazing when settled into a larger city build or just on its own in a dark room and it's also just one of those builds that the closer you look at it, the more details you'll happen to see. I love that there's all of the traditional building woodwork uh, on the inside of the roof has been also shown off in Lego bricks. And congrats to s and Studios. This is a massive build and I hope uh, a lot of people see this in real life because this is definitely something I would love to run into someday at a Lego convention. These big buildings uh, are really, really impressive. Now finishing off the number one build, or sorry, the last build I'm showing off. This is a super biased one. Uh, I absolutely 
absolutely love Ice Planet. This really is the original Lego space theme for me personally growing up. So as many of the old school builders might like to jump back into the blue and gray with the trans yellow highlights, white and blue with trans orange is my bread and butter. And I think this is an amazing explorer ship. I love the use of that uh, dish piece that's on the, the middle rudder in the back. The headlight pieces with the one by ones and the cheese wedge slopes making those little rivets in the front of the wing there look amazing. And it doesn't look like they used the old school trans orange windscreen, but maybe a, a newer mold that came from Nexo Knights. But I like that it's also been blocked off a little bit with those larger uh, sloped bricks on either side. This is a really, really fun space model. Probably one of my favorite modern versions of an ice planet set. The builder is Bob DeQuatre. And we've just finished off top 10 mocks of the week. All the links are in the description below, plus some models that I just did not have time to talk about. And if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Hey everybody, just wanted to pop in very quickly, let you guys know that we've got a Lego web store, www.brickvault.toys, where we sell the PDF step-by-step -step instructions for some incredibly awesome Lego mocks. I highly recommend you guys go check it out if you're interested in building something uh, a little bit more high quality, uh, way more detailed, and the revenue from the web store helps support us here at the channel, as well as the designers that build these awesome Lego creations. So anyways, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.